a perch here in the broadcast booth. And Brad, this is the last time the Phillies come to St. Louis, so it is imperative on this cold, raw day to try to get five innings in somehow for the forecast later today is even worse than the weather we see here. Yeah, as you mentioned earlier, there is that little bit of a window, and you hope to sneak a ball game in. Cardinals hoping to ride a little bit of that momentum from their shutout victory last night over Rob Thompson's team. Bill Finley, the head man here, is giving the umpires all the updates, putting the bases out on the field right now, and they're going to be ready to rock and roll. So this will not be a fun day to play a major league game, but Lance Lynn, you know the weather won't bother him. Hopefully he can take it a little deeper here in game three and knock off the Phillies who start play at five and six on the year. Yeah, hopefully not fun for this Phillies offense. Really, both of these clubs very similar, and they believe that their offenses will power them to the postseason, yet neither one of these crews has gotten going. The Cardinals pitching staff done a very good job against a tough lineup. Look at the numbers in two stars for Lance Lynn. Scoreless in four innings against the Dodgers. Would have went longer if not for a rain delay. Gave up four runs last time out against the Marlins. Bit by the long ball. A couple of home runs by the CBC product, Jake Berger. Another two-run shot by Josh Bell. Uh, but you're right. Would love to get some innings, especially the bullpen was worked a little bit, especially your key pieces last night. What's the biggest challenge in pitching like this? In, in, not just the rain, but just the fact that it's so raw. It's keeping a grip. It really yeah. it is. And when it's misty like this, it's using the rosin, being able to keep your hand dry as possible. You'll see him. He'll go to his pants quite a bit to get some of the, the wetness off his hand. But your pants are going to be wet as well. You see Dusty Blake. He's got the towel there. I mean, you're going to try your best to keep dry when you're out there on the mound. And then the grounds crew is going to do a great job with keeping the diamond dry out there on the mound. You worry about losing your footing in games like this. Well, you know about Lance Lynn. He's a fastball pitcher. Maybe the weather won't won't affect him as much as Aaron Nola, who's got that big knuckle curveball. And as Brad said, neither the Cardinals nor Phillies offenses are where their respective managers would like them to be. But you have to respect the fact that Bryce Harper, who's had a quiet series, can erupt at any time. We'll see if the cards can keep him under control. Three strikeouts, three double plays for Harper so far in the first two games. Yeah, that is the key to remember, though. Both he and Kyle Schwarber have been very quiet so far in this series. Schwarber 0 for 8 thus far but you know it's a matter of time they're going to get a clicking you just hope that time is i don't know tomorrow how about your toyota key to the game it's follow the leader talking about starting pitching in this series so far both michaelis and gray have combined 11 and two-thirds with a 138 era love to see lance be able to follow that lead so we're underway in st louis kyle schwarber batting 205 a couple of homers and five driven in Edwin Moscoso has the plate here in game three. Philly's a very patient team. They walk a lot. They've walked at least three times in each one of their first 11 games. And Schwarber really is a three outcome player. Homer Walker strikeout. Right now he's in the driver's seat. Three balls, no strikes. And four straight gets the game started. A leadoff walk and Trey Turner coming up. Only the third walk issued by Lance Lynn. As you check out the Dobbs Tire and Auto Center's defense for the Cardinals. Jordan Walker back in the lineup in right field. A change at first base. Alec Burleson's giving Goldie a day off. And Yvonne Herrera back in harness behind the plate. Trey Turner, five hits in the series, four of them infield hits. Enough's enough for that, wouldn't you say? Yeah, Strike one. For sure. He's been utilizing that speed. You know how good Trey Turner is. It was a slow start for him last season. Second half of the year, though, really turned it on after signing that big deal with the Phillies. There's a look at that cutter as we showed you the pitch arsenal for Lance Lynn. Been throwing that pitch a bit more. That's good against both lefties and righties, and that's a good pitch if you're trying to get a double play. It's all about missing the barrel, getting some weak contact. But as you mentioned, you better turn that quickly with him out there. Missed a corner. One ball, two strikes for the Phillies shortstop. Bryce Harper is next. And 
a swing and a miss. Trey Turner's down on strikes. It took a little bit more off of this one, too. That's that cutter from Lance Lynn again. It's perfectly located. It's down. It's away. If you don't get the swing and miss, you're getting a weak ground ball. So here is Harper. The Cardinals struck him out three times last night. Just the second time in 62 career games against the Cardinals he's worn the hat trick. Well, you know what the Cardinals did so well, and Sonny Gray started this, was pitched him inside so well. Got him uncomfortable, hard cutters in, and then expanded away. But as you said, if you're pitching that way to Harper, it had better be in. Oh, you don't want to make a mistake. <laughs> that, that backup cutter, the one that just cement mixers up there, this guy does not get cheated on any one of his swings. That's out of play off to the left and an even count for Bryce Harper. The Phillies wrapping up a six-game road trip. They're three and two so far. They go home for a long 10-game homestand. They've got the Pirates, the Rockies, and the White Sox next. They try to catch Atlanta in the east. The pitch lifted softly toward left, and Donovan battles the raindrops and makes the grab, and that's out number two. Here's JT Realmuto. Philly's got a scare with him last night. Bouncing ball in the dirt from Zach Wheeler came up and hit him under the mask and on the right side of the neck, and he had to leave the game. Yeah, and you mentioned it last night, one of the tougher guys in baseball behind the plate. If he had to leave the game, you, you knew it was serious, so very happy to see him back in the ball game today. Rough day for him at the plate before that, had three punch outs on the day. Like to see a little bit more of that. No balls in a strike. Schwarber hasn't moved a muscle at first yet. And JT behind 0 2. The 0 2 is popped into center. And Victor Scott on the run glides back and dropped it. And here comes Schwarber around third. He's going to score, and the Phillies get a gift run here in the first. I think that surprised Victor. Overran it, overcompensated, and couldn't catch it. Well, surprised, first of all, I think how far this thing traveled off the end of the bat, breaks in, then has to go back and then redirects to try to make the play and just can't do it. Now, Vic has been so solid in center. Know that the rain is coming down. I also know that Vic's going to catch that 99 times out of 100. You're right. Absolutely gifts the opposition a run. So a two-base error scores Schwarber, and now Alec Bohm is up. That'll pile up a few more pitches for Lance Lynn. One ball, no strikes. Bohm's hit safely in 11 straight games against the Cardinals. And 237 overall so far this year. Phillies are 5 for 22 with runners in scoring position in this series. All five of those, or at least four of those in game one. All five. They left six men in scoring position in game two yesterday. They actually ended up out hitting the Cardinals yesterday. Eight hits for them. All of them singles, though. Cardinals limited the damage. 0 for 8, to your point, with runners in scoring position for Rob Thompson's club. So just three extra base hits for the Phillies in two-plus games against the Cardinals. And now with the 1-2 pitch. And a shot to center field. Here comes Real Muto around third. He's going to score without a throw. And the Phillies have capitalized with two here in the first inning. Bohm keeps up his magic against the Cardinals. That's his seventh RBI. But just how quickly things can bite you. You end up making an error, make a mistake, cutter away, shot right back up the middle. And this is what happens. This is what we saw happen a lot early on last season. It's something to this point this year we really haven't. Cardinals have not shot themselves in the foot. 
So again with a short bullpen Lynn should be out of the inning at 14 pitches. He's got to throw some more now to Brandon Marsh as he trails two nothing. All this trouble coming with two men out. In for a strike. Marsh has had a good series. He's picked up four hits, one of them a home run. He has three of those so far. Let's see if Lance can finish off the Phillies outfielder here with a quick 0 2 count. The pitch just missed. That's off to our left. We'll try again. A ball and two strikes. Infield looks to be in pretty good shape. Starting to see a little bit of shine behind Nolan Arenado though at third base. Yeah, it is still a steady light rain mist coming down. Again, not the easiest to maintain your grip as a pitcher. It won't be easy. Any ground ball, got to make sure you get a good grip. So at the very least, 10 extra pitches for Lance Lynn here and 10 stressful pitches. Yeah, certainly could end up biting you. Remember, the bullpen was used. It was... Sonny Gray gave you five scoreless. They were great. And then you're back into the pen taxed a little bit. A few guys have thrown back to back, two out of three. That's tipped and caught. And Lynn is out of the first inning. A couple of unearned runs for the Phillies. Puts Lance and the Cardinals behind against Aaron Nola, who's coming on for Philadelphia. Brendan Donovan gets things started. Let's see if the Cardinals can even the score in the first. It. So Alec Burleson gets the start at first base. Nolan Gorman hitting third. He's on a power surge, and hopefully that continues against Aaron Nola today. No doubt about it. Mason win with a day off as well, and the veteran Brandon Crawford is in there. Nola, a 5.40 ERA after his first two starts. And if you're going to face this guy, you want to face him in St. Louis, not Citizens Bank Park. He has been almost unhittable at Citizens Bank Park. Last four starts at home, a .59 ERA. Now, all that damage, you look at the ERA, that was in his first outing of the year against the Braves. Really struggled against them. Four and a third, 11 hits, seven runs, six earned. As you look at the pitch arsenal, leans on that knuckle curve a lot. Four seam sinker, change every once in a while. The cutter, and as you mentioned earlier, Chip, with him liking that breaking ball, really got to worry about the grip in the conditions like this. This is a guy that strikes out 200 men every year in a full season of play. Yet, Brad, this year, just two more strikeouts than walks. Well, and he, again, one of those trends that you don't expect to happen. But he was a guy that last year and those around the organization talked about this. He kind of struggled with the pitch clock and adjusting to that to working a little bit faster. The numbers on the year weren't as good as they've been in the past. But still a strikeout machine, still especially when you give him an early lead, can go out there and attack and fresh off of a seven-year contract extension for $172 million. Know that he was happy to stay in Philly. 3-1 count for Donovan. Good start. The Cardinals get a leadoff walk. So a look at the Phillies. Dobbs tired Auto Center's defense. Marsh Rojas and Castellanos left to right. Bryce Harper again at first. Stock Turner and Alec Bohm and JT Real Muto is back again behind the plate. So no goalie today. You get Wilson Contreras hitting second. Well, it's just great to see Wilson back in the lineup yesterday. Had missed four games with that hand contusion. I'm making him think a little bit. Goldie with the day off. We know he's been scuffing a little bit as of late. Something he's just got to take that mental day, right? Get get off there, put his work in. You know, Goldie has no problem putting the work in. You know what the number is going to look like at the end of the year. But sometimes you need a day off your feet. With the off day tomorrow, get a couple. 
And paints a corner to even the count. The Cardinals will travel to Arizona and Oakland. That's our next road trip out west. Gonna get to meet a possum. I can't wait. Yeah. Still lives there in Oakland. Maybe two if you're lucky. I never know. They travel in packs. <laughs> one ball, one strike. And again, he shows bunt. And there's the big knuckle curve. One and two to count. Not seeing the protective padding on Contreras's hand. Remember, he had that blue plastic sleeve, I guess, over the left hand last night. Not seeing that here today. Well, and you, you wonder, too, obviously, it's to protect getting hit right. there again. But you do wonder if it hinders the swing a little bit, his grip. So, obviously, feeling better not having that on there. And he couldn't check his swing. Nola has his first strikeout. One on, one out. And here is Nolan Gorman, as we mentioned, three homers in his last three games. Well, this was your home run leader last year, expecting huge things from Gorman at the plate this season. We saw him just grow leaps and bounds and recognizing and realizing his strikes on what the opposition was trying to do to him. Slower start, but heating up. Tantalizing target would be right down the third base line. Alec Bohm is about 35 feet away from the bag. One ball, no strikes. We talked about this a little bit in the ball game last night, too, Chip. It's not just the three home runs. He's got big time power, but it's where he's hit his three. I mean, he's been dead center, going the other direction, using the entire field. He's going to get some of those cookies that hang up, and he's going to hit the monster shots way over the bullpen. But him using the other side of the field is going to be big. Three balls, no strikes. Arenado waits on deck. So far, that breaking ball for Nola has been in and out early. The pitch. Fastball popped him up. Stott and Turner are there. It'll be the shortstop. And Trey Turner handles that. Gorman pops out for the second out of the inning. And here is Arenado. Nolan's nine game hitting streak came to an end last night, but he still leads the club in hits. And he'd like to get on the board against Nola here. A home run would tie our game at two. And it's been a while since Nolan's taken the grand tour. We showed you yesterday before the ball game, Nolan Arnato out there on the field well before everybody else putting in the word, just trying to figure some things out. Just appears to be caught in between right now. That timing just a little bit off. Turner Ward, Cardinal hitting coach, working with him and just talking through it, trying to get him back to where he needs to be. Because you know what? As soon as that light turns on, as soon as he's seeing it, as soon as he's getting that timing right, I mean, it's scorched earth hot he can get. Nola's thrown out two baseballs. He wants to find one to his liking. The knuckle curve is not very effective right now. Maybe the Cardinals can take advantage with two outs here in this first on a wet day at Bush Stadium. So three ball counts to three of these first four Cardinals hitters. Well, we saw even in the Cardinals top of the inning. Lance Lynn ended up walking the first guy, the grip. There are some adjustments in this weather. I don't care if Nolan has been struggling a little bit. If you're Aaron Nola, this is not a count you want to be in. 3-1 with this guy, and you're feeling for your grip right now, you make a mistake, he's going to bang it. Foul right off the top of his foot. Always seems to miss the pad. Even if it hits the pad, those things hurt. 
You ever foul one off your shin? No. That's why I sit here. Chip, happened to me one time. I, I really thought that I was going to look down and my leg would be gone. <laughs> Hurt so bad. It was just awful. Uh, it does, just does miss the pad. Hits him in the toe. He's taking a minute. Yeah, I felt like it was that scene in the movie The Patriot where the cannonball comes and takes a guy's leg off. That's what I felt like. <laughs> Well, that's certainly an uplifting mental image. Three I balls, two enough. strikes. <laughs> Donovan will take off with two outs. There he goes. And the pitch popped our way foul. We'll try again. I would assume Nola's got to throw that knuckle curve in this damp weather just enough to keep the Cardinals hitters honest. Yeah, that's what he did right there, and that is one, if the timing is right, that's usually one that Nolan's going to hit. Left it over the middle of the plate. Again, the 3-2 on the ground is short, and Turner, wet baseball, flips that to first, and the side is retired. 2-0 Phillies after one in St. Louis. Hey, Chip, Lance Lynn gave up three homers in his last start on opening day. If you recall, homers were a problem for Lance last year. Lance wasn't pleased with that. He told me three mistakes, and they put good swings on all three of them. Lance said, in hindsight, my pitch selection wasn't great. Maybe that third time through, I need to change some things. And Chip, Lance said, my stuff is fine. I just need to find my rhythm. Hopefully that happens today. Looked like he was out of the first inning with no troubles, but an error, a single cost him two runs and 10 extra pitches. Bill Finley has been out every half inning talking with the umpires here over the condition of the field. Lance Lynn gave thumbs up as to the condition of the mound, but the rain ain't going anywhere, Brad. If anything, it's getting harder here in the second inning. Well, Lance Lynn not one to complain about anything at all. You want to talk about a throwback that can handle any condition. It's that man right there. And I thought that you hit on a really good point earlier. Lance, a guy that throws the fastball a little bit more often. You're not trying to, to spin that thing as much. Might have an advantage here if he's able to get a grip on the baseball. But you saw Nola throw out a couple. There are sometimes you grab a ball and you your head is saying curveball. When you grip it, saying that's not going to happen. We'll see how this one goes for Lance. Unfortunately, a defensive gaffe put him in the hole in this one. But all you can do is go out and attack some more, and that's yeah. what Lynn does with Castellanos to get ahead here in the second inning. Castellanos had his first multi-hit game for the Phillies here yesterday, but he's batting just 154. Another fly ball to center. Victor tracks this one down more cleanly and makes the hat-high catch for out number one. I don't know how many sets of uniforms each Cardinal has on a day like this, but I would imagine the clubhouse staff will be very busy. I was thinking about that actually last half inning as Nola was heading off and he wears the long sleeves. Good chance he's going to end up running through a bunch of those. Bryson Stott bats with one out. He's three for his last 16. So our pal Mark Walsh, he'll be busy washing, drying, folding. Mark, don't forget the downy. That's very important. You're a laundry expert at this point, Chip. I mean, solo mission out here doing it. It's great. To drop my stuff off over at your place. <laughs> I don't mind washing it. I don't mind throwing it in the dryer. I hate folding it. Where do are you, you falling at? Do you iron? Um, if I absolutely have to. Like if it's just noticeable. Yeah. If somebody's like, where did you have that shirt? Your wallet? <laughs> well, sadly, my shirts aren't that small. But your points <laughs> but your points well taken. Or your wallet's that big. Uh, no, definitely not. Um yeah, so where, where, I mean, are you a, do you mind folding? I don't mind it. No? I don't mind it. Okay. Well, maybe I'll bring my stuff to your place, too. <laughs> we could just, just a well-oiled machine. We could just wash. meet, we could just meet on I-64 halfway to O'Fallon. Perfect. Perfect. Two I balls, two sides. <laughs> I bet you do. Bryson Stott. Didn't get that. He drops the bad handle, and Lynn has his third strike out. Two up, two down quickly here in the second inning. Our Kia player profile. Most strikeouts in Cardinals history. Lance Lynn is in the top ten. 
Well, Lance Lynn, and that's what the Cardinals said they wanted to add. They wanted to add stability to the rotation, but they also wanted to add swing and miss. And Lance has shown that coming into this one, 12 strikeouts in his eight-plus innings of work, already three more here. And especially on a day like this, yeah, you want to be able to sneak quick outs. That would be great. But with the wet conditions, if you can get some swing and miss, if you can stop the ball from being put in play, what a benefit. Popped up, first base side. Who wants it? It's going to be Alec Burleson and a much-needed easy inning for Lance Lynn. He got the Phillies on just eight pitches. Cardinals coming up down two. Bingham, you're probably having a good time today. It's 2 nothing. Philadelphia, a couple of unearned runs scored in the first inning. Let's see if the Cardinals can get those back with Herrera, Burleson, and Brandon Crawford, as Brad mentioned, getting the start at shortstop. I know that Yvonne Herrera has been swinging the bat well, been very aggressive, and taking advantage of all these reps that he's had here as of late. Eight hits and six RBIs for Yvonne on the season. A couple of homers as well. And one thing Nola's usually good at is throwing strike one. He hasn't been able to do that much yet in this game. Yeah, field has been an issue. Didn't miss by much on that one. Good pitch right at the bottom of the zone. Didn't get it from Edwin Moscoso, the home plate umpire. And in a game like this where feel is hard to come by, don't help him out. Don't expand your zone. Really hone in, especially in a count like this. Want to be aggressive on a strike that you can hit, but don't expand. On the ground, he missed a double by a couple of inches. Hey, great play down the line, too. That was a tricky hop. That was hydroplane like, action. You think those guys just show up and stand down the line? No, sir. They're in here taking ground balls. I saw Stubby Clapp actually working with him earlier. Two one. Fouled away at the plate. Trying to stop his swing, and Herrera takes some punishment. Aaron Nola, 91 career wins, a sub four ERA in this era of pitching, and 237 career starts. I like the fact that he'll end his career with one team. There aren't enough guys that do that. In yeah, my I do opinion. too. I do too. And really, it never felt like he was going to go anywhere else. I know there were some rumors of talking with different teams. I believe Atlanta's name was thrown out there a little bit, but it always felt like Nola was going to end up back where it started, and I'm right there with him. I like seeing that. Philly's first round pick back in 2014 out of LSU. Swing and a drive. That's belted deep left, and the birds are on the board with a mammoth homer. Oh, man, what a thunderbolt. Chip two pitches prior. It was that same changeup that tied up Herrera, that little check swing. Well, it gets another one. This one catches more of the plate, and this one is way out of here. A 432-foot shot out into left field for his third career home run. Almost to the concourse on a dreary day. That baby had a vapor trail behind it. So Herrero with his third homer, look at the extension. That is a thing of beauty right there. Pulls the hands in, gets the barrel to it, give a little hop, skip, and a jump, and trot around the bases. So the third homer Nola has allowed in 11 innings this year. Alec Burleson looking for his first long ball. He's been putting it in play on the homestand. And he does it again, a sinking line drive handle at second by Stott. That ball was crushed. But there's the first out. Alec Burleson with that line drive, 102 miles an hour off the bat, having flashbacks of last season of seemingly every at bat was something like that, scored something and somebody was standing there. Chance for Brandon Crawford to play today. Another veteran, another left-handed bat. Nothing wrong at all with Mason Wynn, but you got to play your extra men, too. 
They got to get days off even for the young bucks, right? Got to be able to get them off their feet, keep them ready for a long big league season. That's something we forget. These guys haven't played 162 before. Don't know what the rigors of that is like. The staff does know. You can't just run them out there every day, especially early. This has to be the toughest job in baseball. You're, you're used to playing every day for one team. You switch coasts, switch uniforms, and switch roles. It's very difficult. And even for a veteran player, I'm sure that he knows his body better than anybody. He knows what he needs to stay as ready as possible. Look, all the reps in the cage, BP on the field. That's not going to be able to mimic what Nola is going to look like 60 feet, 6 inches away. But he's seen him before, and... He'll be ready for whenever his name is called like it is today. Two balls, two strikes. Crawford's picked up an RBI in four of his last five games against the Phillies as a member of the Giants. Nolos 2-2. Aaron's been pretty picky about which baseballs he likes and which ones he doesn't. The ones he doesn't have a feel for, he's not even throwing back to the umpire. He's There's throwing one right them out. there. Another one right there. The ball is just slick when it gets back to him. You see the frustration right there from him. And, and look, it could be a few things. There are sometimes even when the elements are good, baseballs get to you and they're just not rubbed up as well as you would like them. They feel slick to the touch. You can tell the ones that he's throwing out what grip he's trying to get right away it was that knuckle curve right there didn't like the ball two balls go i don't even know what i don't even know where i would set the number of baseballs you would expect to use in this ball game today but they have gone through i mean a few dozen easily already another two two and on the seventh pitch crawford is down on strikes two punch outs for nola and Jordan Walker is next. Well, this one had all kinds of fight on it. Your Chevy pitch track. It's the knuckle curve from Nola. Straight 12-6 bender. Jordan hitting 182 to start. Got a breaking ball and hammers that toward third. Boom to his left. Throws low and just in time to get a speedy Jordan Walker. Two good defensive plays by the Phillies infield. Rob St. Louis in the second. But the Birds are on the board with their longest home run by distance of the season. Yvonne Herrera hits a 432-footer to cut the Phillies' lead in half. Here, getting more diamond dry on the field and keeping this field very, very playable. It, it is really a well-oiled machine. I don't care what time you come here, Chip, or, you know, or it's a day off. The ground crew's always out here. There's yes. always somebody doing something to make sure that this field is immaculate. Yeah, Bill Finley and his crew do such a good job. By my count, this was a seven-bag diamond dry visit between innings. What's a bag of diamond dry go for? I did, I did do a little Googling. Uh, the first place wanted me to request a quote. Didn't feel like giving them my phone number. Uh, the second place, and I didn't look up Pro's Choice Select, so that's probably better stuff. But around 40 bucks a bag, and I bet that's nicer. So seven times your 40, I mean, look, Chip, not a big math guy, but that's close to $300 half inning. Yeah, carry the two. Yeah, uh, and I think they just went to an eighth bag, so wow. it's over 300 Got to do what you got to do. Big League Baseball, keeping it ready. The mound looks good. They've been asking Lance Lynn and Nola how they feel about it, and Lynn has been, been happy. Lynn probably also happy with that last half inning where he only threw eight pitches yeah. after a lengthier first inning. And it looks like it is slowing down a bit. More of a miss now than that steady rain that was coming down. Gamers right there. That's it. Got the ponchos, their hats, they're ready to go. Doesn't look like Lance Lynn has changed his uniform. You can see the dry spot for him on the back pocket trying to keep the pitching hand 
ready to go as he'll face Kyle Schwarber for the Phillies leading off the third inning. He led off with a walk and scored on an E8. 2-1 game. And Schwarber pops it up right side again. Burleson says he's got it. Beat on that, he does. And Lynn has retired five straight. Let's step aside for a quick word from Great Southern Bank. Morning mist, desert sand, alpaca fur. With so many great options to choose from, we'll help you find the account that's perfect for you. Great options, Great Southern Bank. Trey Turner struck out. Cutters got him in the first inning. And goes right back to the well. Another one there to get ahead. Looks like Lance has got the pitch com on his right hip. Oh, that there he goes. So it looks like he is calling his own game at the at the moment. And working very quickly. Which the defense will appreciate on this nasty day. Three balls and a strike. We've seen Lance a couple of times to land and spin out instead of being able to stick that one. Could be a product of just the wetter turf and pulled three straight pitches. So that's not ideal. Trey Turner is 39 for his last 39 in stolen base tries and he's aboard in front of Bryce Harper. You can see how the Phillies offense when they're really cooking can be so problematic. Schwarber's a threat to hit the ball out of the park with the first pitch of the game. Then you get Turner on. You worry about him. You got to face Bryce Harper and Real Muto. Yeah, again, the the key is get them hot later. Yeah. I mean, it's going to happen inevitably with all of the talent that they have amassed in that lineup. They're going to get going. It's just been slow start. You and I were talking earlier. I found it amazing just with the lineup that they have. They have the fewest extra base hits in all of baseball currently. Just 20 of them. Well, Harper had a three homer game. Take that away. He's six for 34. And knock on wood, the Cardinals have kept him under control in this series. And that one got away from Burleson. It deflects away from Turner, and he'll move up to second without a throw. So we'll see how that scored. The Cardinals gift wrap a base for Trey Turner, who's in scoring position with one out. Throwing air on Lance Lynn. So the Cardinals, the last team in the big leagues to commit an error, have made two in the first three innings today. You can see with Bryce Harper, like so many hitters around the league, it just kind of caught in between. Not comfortable yet. That will happen early in the season. I mean, really... Not that many at bats to pick from right now. Cardinals, unfortunately, seen it with their two biggest stars, too, and Arnado and, and Goldschmidt. But you worry about that far less with veteran hitters who have a track record than you do maybe young guys that are trying to bust in at this level. And I'd say that Bryce Harper has a pretty darn good track record. I would say. I would say the back of his baseball card is pretty good. He was on the cover of Sports Illustrated at 15 years old at Vegas High School. If you like that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, he's part of a very exclusive group of active players with some remarkable numbers. Well, there they are right there. 1,500 or more hits, 300 more homers, and 100 and more stolen bases. Mike Trout, Bryce Harper, Paul Goldschmidt, that's your list. Lance with a 3-2. And just a touch low. So three walks, two in a row, but you set up the double play. 
JT Realmuto is up. He's the guy that hit the, fl the fateful fly ball to center in the first inning. You can see the considered effort of Ivan Herrera to really work on receiving those low pitches and making them look better. Yeah, for sure. Well, and that is the that's the way that it's taught now is you work from the ground up, thumb down, and pull the baseball up into the zone. And from the umpire's perspective, it's very difficult to see that one down. It's very obvious when you're working up and then going down. It's hard to get that strike. But I think that both Herrera and Contreras behind the plate are doing a great job of sneaking those strikes. Another look at that one there. Didn't get that call from Edwin Moscoso. That was a real issue last yeah. year for a staff that really was trying to pitch down in the zone, found themselves behind because oftentimes these, those shadow zones, they call them, right there on the, the edges of the strike zone were just not being presented well. There's a great look at it right here with Herrera. Thumb is down, working from the ground up. Just well presented. Two balls and a strike for JT Realmuto. And when Lance is missed, that's been where he's missing. And he's now pawing around at the front slope of the mound. 200 runs for the Phillies in the first, and Yvonne Herrera Homer has made it a one run game. Philadelphia threatening again here in the third. Back to back, one out walks. I'd like to see one of those cutters away, get that ground ball. Good fastball away. That might work too if it stays in play for Alec. Keys to the warning track, and he's got room. So Real Muto pops out. That helps. But now we've got to get Alec Bohm, who's got an RBI hit. Well, was Bohm last time up? He did serve one of those cutters from Lance Lynn right up the middle to drive in Real Muto. Boom, another one in that Phillies lineup. In a very hitter-friendly ballpark, but either way, 20 home runs, drove in 97 a year ago, thumb top to bottom. And he doesn't get enough credit for being a good, rangy third baseman with a strong arm. He showed that earlier today. Of course, for the Phillies, there'll be no third baseman greater in their history than Michael Jack Schmidt. Yeah, hard to live up to that, isn't it? Hall of Famer. He's part of the Phillies broadcast crew on the weekends at home. Hope we'll get to catch up with him later on this summer. Two balls, no strikes. Alec gives chase, but is out of real estate. Two balls and a strike. Best seat in the house. Got all the snacks in that backpack, too. I mean, they're good to go. It was a good day at the ballpark. Looks happy as can be. Fans need Brock Cabrellas. 3 1 pitch. Didn't mean to. Foul back. Full count. Yeah. Don't have to hold anything. Yeah. Bit more snacks that way. I think we have our Brock Cabrellas back there. I mean, luckily we're dry here, but you know that we'll wear a hat anytime, obviously. Runners to go with a 3 2 pitch with two outs. Number 56 for Lance Lynn. There they go. And it is strike three called inside corner, and that will retire the side. It's 2-1 Philadelphia Cardinals up here in the home third. Everything. Talking about ingenious. I mean, second to that Cardinal hat yep. that given away on the 21st. That bad boy looks good, 
It matches everything, and it's going to keep you dry. Yeah. Last year, remember, we had the great Cardinals Legends umbrella yeah. giveaway. That's a terrific look. But I feel like I feel like I'm cheating on the Redbird hat with the Brock Brown. Maybe maybe have a little combination. Okay. Right, wear them both at the same time. Now, if you could only add the hot dog hat into that, we'd have something special. If that doesn't have runs in it, Chip, there's no such thing as a rally cap. Just saying. That's it right there. We suffer for our craft. You look fantastic. Thanks. If anybody can pull it off, <laughs> it's you. Uh, Victor Scott, the second, leads off against Aaron Nola. See if he tries to bunt with the wet track. Does it. First pitch swing. Skies it into shallow center. He's been very aggressive at times at the plate, Brad, and still hitting the bottom half of the baseball. Yeah, and obviously that's going to be the evolution, right? It's more that line drive stroke for Victor Scott. And they even love to see him on the ground, as you mentioned, with the wet track out here. But overall, what he is bringing defensively, and look, like you're going to have your first, right? Made his first error yeah. of his big league career today. He has been such a benefit out in center field for this team. Donovan jackknifed away from that pitch. He drew a leadoff walk. Cardinals couldn't move him around. Brendan looking for his first hit in 11 tries. Pulls that foul, and Nola in command, 0-2. Oh and, and all of a sudden, it's the rain has slowed down a little bit. It appears that Nola has got a little bit better grip. That was a really nice sequence. Front door sinker for strike one, then that slider down for strike two. Swing and a high fly ball hit to right. Castellanos back. Donnie gulps one out to tie the game. I don't think that's what Aaron Nola was trying to do. 0 2 count was in command, went with the knuckle curve. This pitch is down, but Donnie goes down and gets it. 375 foot shot for his second home run of the season. A big swing of the bat right there. I mean, it's almost like he punched it that way. He ball. just got, he got the barrel to it, right? That's the thing. The ball will fly if you barrel it up. So the Cardinals with two solo homers. That doubles the season total allowed by Nola. New life for the Redbirds. It's a 2-2 game. It's a nice hat, Chip. Here's Wilson. Two balls, no strikes. That's how Nola got Contreras to swing and miss in the first inning, but he couldn't get that man. Brendan Donovan's hit his second home run. The 2 1. He has not been able to throw that knuckle curve either for cold strikes very often, and he hasn't gotten a ton of chases with it yet uh, either. He's had a couple of good ones. The one to Crawford was probably the best that he struck him out yeah. on. That was a you know 12-6 breaking ball, but inconsistent early on. Off to our right and out of play. It's a full count for Cardinals DH Wilson Contreras. They look at things, too, coming in for Nola. And, again, most of the damage happened in that first one against the Braves. But opposition was hitting 300 on that knuckle curve so far early this season. And he just missed. Real Muto thought he dotted the outside corner, didn't get the call. And after the homer, it's a walk to Contreras. 
Well, all you want out of the home plate umpire is consistency. Your Chevy pitch track here. This is just off the plate away. Edwin Moscoso, both ways, has not been giving that pitch. So Nola back to the stretch. Gorman popped out his first time up. Hammered foul. Strike one. Gorman and Jose Altuve tied atop the second baseman's home run leaderboard. That, though, might change in the days ahead as Jackson Holiday got called up to the major leagues. Could change quickly. Yeah. Big congratulations to him, to Matt and Leslie Holiday. Is it another dream realized? You knew it was a matter of time. Thought it was going to be out of spring training. Wasn't the case. Took a couple of weeks, and I got a feeling he won't be going back ever. Well, he obviously needed some seasoning at AAA. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Jackson in 10 games at AAA. Two homers, nine RBIs, 18 runs, and hit 333. <laughs> <laughs> and how, how many games? Ten. Ten games. Yeah. I mean, flew through the minor leagues last year. Easily could have called him up a season ago. Sharply hit towards second. Might be two. And a high throw. And Harper back to the pillow in time to retire the side. Cardinals getting some good swings on Aaron Nola. Brendan Donovan punches his second homer into the seats and right, and that ties our game. 5K. Brendan Donovan has had a knack for the clutch when the Cardinals are down or tied. He somehow, some way finds a way to come through. Well, yet again, right? Striking when they need him the most, stepping up for the team, and evening things up. You take a look at Lance Lynn out there for his fourth inning of work. It's coming down a little bit harder again, isn't it, Chip? It does look, though, looking at the forecast, because, you know, I'm an amateur meteorologist. Looks like that system. Gonna wait a while. We got a, a bigger window than expected. Really? Well, things initially looked like it was going to get bad around 3, 4 o'clock. I think that's pushed back a little bit further. If you trust my free app, I'm not paying for weather. I'm not going to do it. I'm not so paying wait for a weather app. I'll pay for a lot of things. You're not paying for know. weather? You're nope. not paying for Diamond Drive? We've established that. No, I'm not. No. <laughs> How about these fans on this nasty day? They're out in pretty good number. There's no such thing as a bad day for baseball, nope. is there? No, no sir, we Bob. And more than one way to stay hydrated here in game three. So Lance Lynn back to level, 2-2 game. Marsh, Castellanos, and Bryson Stott. I talked about it earlier in the series, but the Cardinals have had a knack for coming back already early on this year. Three come from behind victories on the season. That's something that they really struggled with last year. And I know that victories in general were hard to come by last year. We end up 20 games under 500, but like seeing that early fight back in this club, especially against guys like Nola. Yeah, I think it's obviously a very differently composed ball club. There are more ways that this team can beat you offensively. The starting pitching, by and large, has done an excellent job of getting the game through six, or at least into the sixth. And I don't know if we talked enough about it, how good and reliable the Cardinals' bullpen has been, meaning if it's a close game, your offense gets a chance to catch up. How clutch was that performance last night? I mean, the bullpen had big moment after big moment. Sharply hit to second and right to Gorman for out number one. That was not an easy play right there by Gorman, who has played a ridiculous second base in his own right. This is 107 miles off the bat, sticks that thing. And Jojo Romero, four strikeouts, bases loaded situation, got out of that. Libertor, the big had strikeout, couple with walks. that double play off the bat of Bryce Harper. Bullpen this homestand, five games for those guys. A 2.89 ERA. That's the ninth best in baseball over that span. And something, again, that the Cardinals wanted to solidify. Wanted to know that when they pick up the phone down there, they feel confident. And Ollie, we were talking to him this morning, he just loves the options that he has. And that's without having his full crew right now. I think that's a great point, Brad. The Cardinals start play today, 6-6. Six and six. They don't have their team together. 
and this was a very difficult start to the season. Still some difficult games to finish today, and obviously our next series with the Diamondbacks. But coming off of a 91 loss season last year, there were many who wondered where St. Louis would stand after their first five series. I think they're standing in a terrific spot. Yeah, they're right there. I think the, the thing you could do a quick, quick glance and look at the standings. Say, oh, look, the Cardinals are in last place. We saw the Pirates do this last year. and It's a great start for them. And I think that the Pirates are a, a young, talented team. They're getting better and better. Nine and three the start of the season. Impressive. But the Cardinals have some staying power. And it is also, to your point, who, who are you playing against? Cardinals have played some very good ball clubs. We'll continue to play those good ball clubs. And they head to Arizona. You just wait for them to get healthy. Get a couple of arms back in the bullpen. So nice to get Sonny Gray back and what he was able to do in his 65 pitches. Make it 64 in five scoreless innings. Another strikeout there for Lance Lynn. Another hard cutter. Make that strikeout number five for Lynn. You could say he twisted him into a pretzel. Oh, I see what you did there. Piecing together things that we've seen. Seen this before. Nice cutter. 88 down and away. Just looks so uncomfortable waving at that thing. So Lynn set down four straight, five strikeouts. He's gotten Bryson Stott to swing and miss today. So he's 0 for 1. Ball two, two and oh, your count. Lifted foul toward us and out of play. Two balls and a strike. I know you've got your hats ready. You got the Brock umbrella. You got your Redbird giveaway hat that's coming up April 21st. You have your net ready. Uh, Ricky Darty is supposed to be in charge of the Nets, and he did not put them out. Way to go, Rick. Fly ball center. Victor on the run. Still going, still going to the track. He got it, and that will retire the side. Lynn retires in an order in the fourth. Yvonne Herrera is coming up. He's already homered, and we're tied at two. Busiest man in St. Louis at the moment, Bill Finley and his crew. They're doing a great job trying to make sure we have a chance to complete five innings in this game. He's telling them, I don't expect the hard stuff to come down for quite some time. <laughs> Pretty sure that's what I heard him say. They're keeping dry and also doing the bird dance. Na, 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 na. You think they practice that? Of course they, they were. In, they were that. all synced up. It was very well. Oh, it's right. like synergy, right? You're around somebody enough. You end up picking up some of those tendencies. These guys travel together. They got the same dance moves. And that's the case. I really worry about you. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Nolan Arenado gets things started for the Cardinals. Herrera and Burleson to follow. We're tied at two apiece. Arenado grounded out his first time up. And for both pitchers, as they come out to get ready for their inning, they have to stand to the side of the mound while the grounds crew does its thing. First pitch popped up in the right. Stott and Castellanos. It'll be the right theater. Castellanos, one pitch, one out. Here is Herrera. Check out the metrics on his homer, our stat cast, powered by Google Cloud. Well, he gets into this thing. All over a great swing, 112.4 miles an hour off the bat, the 432 foot shot. And look at StatCast, even adding in the rain. They didn't think of everything. Three homers for Herrera. He swings the first pitch. And Turner handles that chest high. Viganola's going to get a free strike here. I'm guessing Burleson's not going to swing at the first one. Let's see about that. He lined out to second his first time up as we check in with Jim Hayes. Yeah, Burleson hit 375 this spring. Then he got off to a cold start in the season's first few games. He's gotten back on track. Burleson told me, I don't think the numbers tell the whole story to me. It's how I feel at the plate 
and how I'm seeing the ball right now. I'm in a really good place. Chip, we've seen this young man. He hits the ball hard. He does. He hits it hard. He was maybe the toughest luck hitter for the Cardinals last year. But I'm sure, Brad, you know as a player, that attaboy only goes so far, right? It's it's tough saying, well, you hit it hard, but you're still hitting 220. I thought it was impressive, though, last year for a young player, the way that he handled that. Like he would hit a rocket right at somebody, and he was, not that he wasn't frustrated, that he wasn't getting the hits that you just heard when you barrel the baseball, but his process remained the same. He didn't try to turn himself into something else. He didn't try to start lifting the baseball more. He's got real bat-to-ball skills, very difficult to strike out, and hits a lot of line drives. This guy's a professional hitter. In case in point, last year, remember the game against the Cubs? He hit the ball to deep center. Great catch up over the wall. Instead of a game-winning home run, it was the third out of the game, if I remember correctly. And Burleson said, look, I did my job. I hit a homer. He just made a great catch. Right. And a shot to center on Q. Burleson has his first hit, a two-out single. And that'll pull on the inning for Nola. Third hit for the Cardinals. But this is an area of his game that is impressive, too. Is It doesn't even have to necessarily be a strike. This is a sinker that ran off the plate, and he's still able to barrel this thing into center field. Just such good coverage. So Crawford got arguably the best knuckle curve that Nola has thrown today. That struck him out in the second. Well, that ball really danced him. You almost never see JT Real Muto catch a pitch with his elbow pointing toward the third base dugout. Yeah, that was the changeup from Nola. I think the hand just got to the side of it, had way more run than it did sink. Good adjustment with that pitch there, though misses down under the zone, and all of a sudden Crawford's in command of this count 2-0. Marsh is very close to the line in left. Rojas straight away in center. Crawford has a ton of real estate to play with in left center and down the right field line. Sharply hit to second, and the ball catches Stott. He went to a knee and makes the play to retire the side. Quick inning for Nola. The Cardinals get a hit, but we're still tied heading to fifth. Fun uh, as well, and hopefully you're going on the heels of another victory of a series. Cardinals have won two series in a row, looking to win their first series finale of the year. Have not won that last match. Is the, where did he come from? What are the A's had? He came from Oakland, right? What, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> good call, Chip. <laughs> one more programming note before Brad socks me in the nose. Game one of our series with the Diamondbacks will air on Valley Sports Midwest Extra. We'll have programming overlap with Blues Hockey. So tune in Friday at 8 on Valley Sports Midwest Extra. Where we're going to make it extra good. Exactly. Exactly right. I don't think we'll have to worry about rain. At least I hope not. You never know. Those domes leak a little bit too. Didn't they actually have one this spring where the roof was open? They're not allowed to close the roof there while people are inside anymore. And it started raining, and then they had to bang it. Oh, stay hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, spring training rain delay. Those are always fun. But hey, congratulations to the Diamondbacks. They had a magical year last yeah. year. Knocked off these Phillies. Somewhat surprisingly many thought to advance to the World Series and Tori Lavolo picked up his 500th career win as the Arizona skipper. Uh, really impressive what they were able to do. They pitched so well and that is the thing like I, I think fans get tired of hearing about and it sounds like a cliche just get in you never know what's going to happen. It's the truth. You get hot at the right time. You've got a pitching staff that you trust and you can go a long way. There were not too many people, Chip, that expected the Diamondbacks to be able to take over Rob Thompson's Phillies. Like, I, nobody saw that one coming. I didn't, especially with Philly having the series lead. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of people that still think back and think that the Phillies were in the World Series. That wasn't the case. I, I can't remember anybody that would make that mistake, but 
not up here, but <laughs> certainly uh, there is something about that momentum. Think about the Rockies the year that they went to the World yes. Series, had that incredible three-week finish in September, unbelievable defense, and went to the World Series against the Red Sox. Something to be said, too, with uh, teams that have to play for something down the stretch. We've seen that so many times with teams that have a division sewed up, have a playoff spot sewed up, and then they come in not playing any real competitive games and get bounced early. So we'll see what it looks like this year for the Diamondbacks and super excited for the Cardinals run right now because starting to piece things together. Starting pitching has been a nice boost. And Lance Lynn now out for his fifth inning work. Four innings for Lance, two runs unearned. He's punched out five. Now at 71 pitches. He starts with Johan Rojas, who popped out and takes a little low. Signature moment for Lance Lynn happened in the first inning of his first start. I think it's safe to say here in 2024. Bases loaded, nobody out against the Dodgers, and just said, well, the heck with this, in as many words, and struck out the next three batters. I actually read his lips. He didn't say that. Uh, but, <laughs> no, you're right. Like, you talk about rallying the troops. Base hit, base hit, base hit. I mean, that was the, the, the start to the game. And then punch out, punch out, punch out, fist pumps coming off and got out of another jam in the second inning. And as we mentioned, it was four innings in that game against the Dodgers. Lance would have been out there for more if there had not been that rain delay. It's just great. to. I just love the way that he attacks. And I love what he brings to this staff, a guy that's going to take the ball. It's raining. Who cares? Oh, opening day, whatever. I got this. Just so confident in his, in his abilities, and rightfully so. That one didn't stick. Tough break. Still two balls, two strikes. And obviously you want to see what Lynn does for the Cardinals this year, but I can't wait to see what the ripple effect of his presence, of Sonny Gray's presence, Kyle Gibson's presence, Andrew Kittredge's presence yeah. in the bullpen for the young pitchers in the organization. As that one's popped toward... Shortstop where Brandon Crawford hauls it in. This is San Francisco weather. No trouble for him. And there's out number one. I think you're right, though. I mean, oftentimes you, you got to know what it's supposed to look like, right? What, what, do, what do guys that are been in the big leagues for 10 years, how do they do it? How do they go about it? It's not just skill set. Obviously, skill set has a lot to do with it, but work ethic, leadership. What does leadership really mean? How, how does it happen behind the scenes, and what can you pick up from it? It means a lot learned so much from teammates throughout my career of how they go about their businesses through the good times, the bad times, and staying consistent through 162. And Chip, I don't think it's ever been more difficult to stay consistent with all the media that's out there and all the, the reach that yeah, you can pretty much get to any player that you want via social media. It's hard to keep your head on straight all the time. That's where those veteran guys are great to lean on. Lance checking the spike says he contemplates a 2-0 pitch to Kyle Schwarber, whose walk scored and popped out today. 2-2 game. Lynn's allowed one hit. Let's not forget that through four and a third innings. Cardinals have two runs on three hits. They've hit two solo homers to tie things up. Pull a string on it. Full count. A nasty sinker right there from Lance Lynn. That thing just took off. Stayed on top of it. Good pressure. Finished out in front. It's the thing with Lance. I mean, he throws three variations of the fastball and keeps you off balance. So after Schwarber jumped ahead 3-0, and oh, he's got 3-2 and two now. And he came back to strike him out. Six strikeouts and two are away. He's retired seven straight. Cutter back door backed up on him and got the swing and miss. You see Lance. Grounds crew been doing such a great job to keep this mound playable. Sticks the landing. What's that feel like? As a pitcher, you're used to the clay and the dry surface, and then you've got the diamond dry on top. Is is it 
similar feeling? It is. It is just due to the fact that the clay is always so hard anyhow, right. and that stuff mixes in with the clay. The bad feeling is when it gets slick, and then all it takes is that little tiny shift. Like your, your foot lands, and then you slide a little bit. That really takes you out of your release point and your balance. So haven't seen really. We saw Lynn a couple of times a few innings go slide off a couple of times and really spin off. But for the most part, both he and Nola have had no issues with the mound. And it looks like both guys have pretty much the same landing spot, which obviously is helpful. Bill Finley looks on. Two and two for Turner. Yeah, Bill and his staff are earning their pay today. They've done a great job. Yeah, after a after a game like this, you could probably use a road trip for the team. <laughs> yeah, they're still going to be out here at seven in the morning tomorrow. Yeah, think about all the work they put in. First home stand of the year, opening day, all that's expected. You've got so Clydesdales, now the bad weather. The 2-2. It's no full count. Something we forget about. You, you see it more, especially when you're here early. Like, you know, we get to the ballpark pretty early. All that it takes to put together a big league game. Oh, man. There is a whole lot that goes on behind the scenes. A lot of people that make it happen. Ray Turner putting up a fight, still a full count. I th that's the best part about our jobs, I think, is getting to the ballpark four or five hours sometimes before the game and seeing the ballpark come to life. The ushers yeah, get in, do. the smell of the popcorn, the grass is getting cut, all that. As that's just a touch low, and Turner earns a walk. Let's see if he's in play here. He's walked twice in today's game. So you got to face Bryce Harper with a man aboard and two out. But first, a quick word from Rally House. Play ball, St. Louis. Shop the latest in Cardinals style with your favorite brands and throwback designs. Rally House has gear for every fan. Well, a belt buckle paid the ultimate price, it appears. A little wardrobe malfunction there. Get himself a fresh one. Tell you what, this is the busiest day of the year for Mark Walsh, wouldn't you say? Oh, I would think so. Luckily, at least the team is not traveling directly after the game. Mark Walsh, home clubhouse manager, him and his crew do so much work. Talking about all the work that gets done on a big league ball game. But, I mean, there is going to be a lot of laundry, a lot of muddy equipment, and then off on the road tomorrow with everything looking pristine and brand new. At least you got some time to soak those home whites. So Bryce Harper has to wait till Lance Lynn gets dressed up again. Don't forget the pitch com, Lance. There we go. And it's good to see him walking on the field with his glove on his hat as opposed to off in spring training. All good call on that. Still time for that throughout the year. You never know. <laughs> He's had to work hard. He's thrown a lot of pitches, three walks, six strikeouts. Remember that first inning, 10 extra ones after the error. But he's given the Cardinals nearly five innings of a two-run ball today and just one hit. Harper's flat out, and he's walked. Lance Lynn has made pitches when he is needed to. Like you said, only the one hit in this ball game. Nothing normal about the conditions in this one. Nothing normal about any of the starts that Lance has had, as we've talked about. Two rain games, had an opening day. Pitch count now at 92. So some action going on in the Cardinals' bullpen. Zach Thompson begins to loosen. Two zero count. And Harper took that ball three. Oh. 
Harper strokes that towards center, but Victor is there, and he puts that away. They green light Bryce Harper, who barrels it, but hits it right to the Cardinals center fielder, and Lance Lynn in a 2-2 deadlock. Just a, a miraculous job of keeping this field playable. The umpires working on their dance moves as well. We'll get a little dance off with Fred Bird later. Got ourselves just a gridlock ball game. Five strong innings from Lance Lynn. Only the one hit allowed. Two unearned runs early. And a pair of home runs for the Cardinals. Both Herrera and Donovan left the yard. That's an ET jacket. Tell me that didn't look like ET. It did? Yeah. Good call. Got to get one of those. So handshakes and hugs for Lance Lynn, who's through five innings, two unearned runs for him. He could win the game if St. Louis could push across a run here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Walker, Scott, and Brendan Donovan will be the St. Louis batters against Aaron Nola, who has struck out two in today's play. He's walked two and given up two homers. And Nola, the pitch count still down for him, sitting at 61 pitches right now. And hope is stringing something together. A couple of solo shots. We'd love to get somebody on before some of that power for the Cardinals. And love to get Jordan Walker in on the mix. He got robbed earlier. Hit a hot shot down the line there. It was Alec Bohm over at third base. Gunned him out in his first at bat in the second. Well, the Cardinals were very aggressive in the fourth inning. Arenado and Herrera both swung at the first pitch. Let's see if they can work some counts here against Nola, who's had five three-ball counts in the game. Just 61 pitches throw through four frames. First pitch, swinging, fly ball hit towards center. Rojas going back, track and shy of the wall, and there's out number one. Walker gave it a ride, but he's 0-4-2. Fans, Grateful Dead, Dead Night returns to the ballpark Friday, April 19th. With your theme ticket, fans get a long sleeve Grateful Dead lightweight hoodie. Come early for a special pregame performance by Brad's favorite band, Jake's Leg. Tickets are available at cardinals.com slash theme. Know where we're going to be on April 19th. I bet. Here's Victor. Try a bunt. Strike one. Well, if he drops one down, slick infield, Bohm well in on that side. Could bring that bunt with him. Test Harper over at first base. There's a bunt try, but foul toward third. Once this kid starts getting the ball on the ground more consistently, it's really going to be fun to watch. Right now, a lot of fly balls. Yes, they've been hit hard, but he's still 0 for his last 23 at the plate. Well, we saw it in his first couple of at-bats, ground balls, the pressure that he puts on the defense right away. They know we showed you the sprint speed before. He's the fastest player in the league. But as they say, you can't steal first. I think that Ollie Marmol, this entire staff, has done a, a really good job with Vic because he looks at the, I'm sure he's looking up at the scoreboard, sees the number, sees the average. There's the ground ball, but it's pulled right at Harper, and he will step on the bag. See? Little indecision there between Nola and Harper, and that almost cost the Phillies. So Brendan Donovan got the game tied. He's our BJC difference maker. Yeah, why not, right? Went down. That was an 0-2 knuckle curve from Nola. Goes down, gets the barrel to it, and this thing just flies out of the ballpark to even things up. So that snapped it over for 11 for Donovan. Cardinals starting to power up just a bit. You mentioned it earlier, too, Chip, with Donovan and his home runs. The timing has been there. 14 of his 18 career home runs have come with the Cardinals tied or trailing. I mean, the guy has just been coming up clutch. Had a good pass at that pitch, but that's off to our left. And foul, and Donovan down. Nothing and two. Mentioned the Diamondbacks, our next opponent. They are in Colorado. They play a little later this afternoon. 
Friday, Saturday, Sunday against the Snakes, then to Oakland for a three-game series. Inside-out swing, fought it off. Nola's in pretty good shape, Brad, pitch count-wise. really is. And, and like you said, the Cardinals have jumped on some early pitches, but I think that's a good idea, too. With a, a strike thrower, you want to be able to put something together against them. Don't want to necessarily get to that curve late. Nice take there with the changeup off the plate by Donovan. Made him labor a little bit in the first inning. But so far, so good. Fourth inning, only nine pitches, sitting on nine right here with a one-two count and two outs in the fifth. Man, oh man, he is just missing. Great eye for Donovan, two and two. And obviously that baseball defective, it didn't land for a strike. So two in a row for Nola have been tossed out. Well, like they're not listening. You get rid of those baseballs. You got a bunch of them here. He doesn't know those are coming out of his check. <laughs> he won't notice. <laughs> Good point. The 2 2. High fly ball hit toward left center. Martian Rojas. It's Rojas in center, and Nola has a 1 2 3 fifth in it. Runs his top. Yeah, not an ideal situation for any pitcher with conditions today, but five innings, six strikeouts, worked around four walks, and made big pitches when he needed to. Lance Lynn just unfazed by anything, and the Cardinals right now, a brand new ball game. All knotted up, two to two, a couple of solo shots for the bird, and it's going to be Andre Pallante. Pallante is going to be your Chevy call to the bullpen. And look at his numbers through five games so far this year. You know, with Andre, if you're in the infield, be on your toes. Ground balls galore. And today, rainy day, got to be careful with getting a grip on it. So, you know that Cardinals defender is going to be ready. And of the Cardinals relievers, Pallante, one of the more rested relievers. He has pitched a total of one inning since the end of play April 3rd. So, I'm guessing, Brad, with Lynn going five, does Pallante get two innings today, the sixth and seventh, if all goes well? I think you see how it sets up, but he very well could see how quickly it goes for Pallante. Because as you mentioned, he got a third of an inning in game one of this series against the Phillies. But the workload has not been as high for him recently. But you'd love to be able to sneak a couple out of Pallante. But yeah, yesterday with the bullpen, Jojo Romero was clutch, inning in two-thirds, struck out four, but threw a lot of pitches there. Matt libertor has gone back-to-back games. I think they'd like to stay away from him. Same thing with Ryan Helsley, back-to-back -back games. But still got some pieces that you trust, and that's the beauty of this kind of revamped bullpen for Ollie Marmel, for Dusty Blake, is even when you're down potentially a couple of guys, and no word for sure on how they're going to utilize some of those back-end arms, you like any time that you answer the phone down there. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. How do those two Cardinal fans have a child wearing a Phillies cap? Kids are rebellious, Chip, and they're starting at younger <laughs> ages. Like they just anything that's going to tick off mom and dad, they're going to do. It's well, like, oh, what do you what do you guys what are you guys wearing today? Oh, all your Cardinal stuff? Oh, great! I'm going to get this. And he probably bought it on Amazon with their credit card. Good chance. Got to have those things password protected. I didn't think of that part. Don't know. <sighs> Something I'd have done. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing Amazon wasn't around. <laughs> I'd have been in debt still. So Pallante versus Real Muto. Bohm and Marsh to follow. It's a 2-2 game. Phillies have been held to one hit. So the challenge for Pallante here, this mound is probably going to feel a lot different than the bullpen with all the diamond dry that's been applied. See how he settles in with Phillies catcher and inside the first base bag, an opposite field single for JT, who leads off the sixth inning. Let's check it again with the cat. 
Hey, how about Sonny Gray last night? Five scoreless, no walks, five Ks in his Cardinals debut. Sonny told me after the game, I felt more calm, collected, and confident than I did in any of my side sessions or that sim game. He said it felt like home. Chip Sonny came up with Oakland. He's now pitched for five teams. He said it felt like home yesterday. That says something, doesn't it? It says an awful lot. I mean, everybody was raving about his performance, and especially because no one really knew what to expect. He had the simulated game, Brad, but hadn't faced live pitching in a game situation in about a month. Yeah, we talked about that, and you were you were asking me during the ball game, you know, how much different it's going to be with fans in the stands, and we just kind of reference his his approach in general to everything that he does. Super hyper focused, even in his bullpen. So. He was able to build as much atmosphere as he possibly could during those sim games. But I love hearing that from from Sonny, from Jim Hayes' report, that this is as comfortable as he has felt. This is being on the mound in a big league ball game. That is what he's done a lot of his life. This is where he wants to be, and he lobbied to come back and be a part of it. And as Ollie said, look, this guy tells me he's ready to go. He's ready to go. Come on, Andre, throw strikes. Oh, real easy from where you sit, Chip. Three balls, no <laughs> strikes. That's no. always the most helpful tip out of the stands. Throw a strike. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't even know. That was that's what you wanted. Is that, is that the I point of the game? That. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> Pitch. There we go. Three and one the count. And to wrap up Sonny Gray, I assume his next start will be in Oakland, where his career began against the A's. Full circle right there for Sonny. Would love to see right here that fastball down in the zone a little bit more. There's your 6 4 3. But it's not to be. A single and a walk later. Brandon Marsh is coming up for the Phillies with nobody out and two aboard. March 0 for 2 in this one, Chip, as you mentioned, but strong series for him. 4 for 7 coming into this game. Andre had eight double plays turned behind him last year. He'd love one here from Marsh. Cardinals are leading all of baseball into grounded into double plays. 14 of them for the birds. You know that's something that Dusty Blake is looking for here is Von Herrera is going to go out there and talk it over as he falls behind Marsh. So think too with Palante's fastball all he's got to do is is be down with that thing. And even if you're in a fastball count looking for the heater, he is almost impossible to square up for the left-handers. But his image is off so far. Ball two. There we go. Two balls and a strike. Philly's got both their runs in the first inning. They're both unearned runs. They have just two hits. That one inside the bag at third, and that's going to score Real Muto. Boom on his way to third, and he'll stop there. Tough break for Palante. A couple of opposite field hits for the Phillies in this inning, and they take the lead. Yeah, those are maddening right here. Your Plaza tire service pitch track. 94 mile an hour fastball down away, just sticks the bat out. I mean, this thing just beat into the ground and sneaks right down the line. So Dusty Blake has spotted something. He wants to come out and calm down Palante, who's allowed two hits and a walk without retiring a batter so far in the inning. And action begins again in the St. Louis pen. 
It is Zach Thompson who starts to play catch. There's Zach. I don't know if we gave you the pitching matchups for the series in Arizona. Steven Matz will kick things off against Brandon Fott. Kyle Gibson, Ryan Nelson on Saturday night. And then Miles Michaelis and Zach Gallon in a good duel Sunday afternoon. I love the start so far of the season for Steven Matz. Incredibly impressive. 1 0 on the young season, 174 ERA. It'll be big key to what they're doing in year three of a four year deal. Another opposite field hit. Bohm scores. And Marsh throws out an anchor at second. So the Phillies going the other way this entire inning. They now have a two run lead. Right here with Castellanos. This is almost like playing a little pepper. Just pulls the hands in. Didn't even look like a full swing for him and shoots it through the right side. So rough inning for Palante. Three hits and a walk. He does not retire a batter. And Zach Thompson is on for the Cardinals with the Phillies up 4 2 here in the sixth. On the Bally Sports app. Phillies are giving us the blues for the moment. A two run sixth inning on three hits. And now it's Zach Thompson's turn to answer a Chevy call to the bullpen. A little role change here for Zach Thompson, who had been in the rotation for a couple of turns as Sonny Gray was on the I.L. Gray back yesterday and will shift into the pen and might be looking to eat up a couple of innings. High leverage here, though, for Thompson. Big bender taken low by Stott, who showed bunt. Lefty's only one for 12 against Thompson, so a chance to improve on that. Cardinals would love a double play ball with two in, two on, and nobody out. Stott wanted to know if that was called a strike or because he offered at it. Right off his knuckles and headed for the on deck circle left side and Herrera's got it. Stott can't advance the runners big first out for Thompson one away. Well, what a pitch right there just ties him up and a really nice job by Herrera to pounce finds this ball quickly right before it gets to the net. The big out right there. Now all of a sudden you're a ground ball away from getting out of this inning and limiting the damage. Johan Rojas is 0 for 2. Got the call on the curveball. It's a nice weapon to have to being able to throw that slower curveball in there. Steel strike one. Nobody's up there looking for that thing first pitch. Herrera's got something in his eye, so a quick pause. <laughs> and now Rojas steps out. I believe he was charged with his timeout. In the air to shallow center. Victor coming on. He can't get there. That drops in safely and the bases are loaded. You've seen in this inning all the damage against Palante. Little ground balls. Now this one a flare that finds a home in the outfield. Bases loaded and not exactly the man that you want to see step into the plate in Schwarber. Cardinals have done a really nice job against him in this series, but 
We have to make some pitches here. Six career slams for Schwarber. Today he's 0 for 2. He has walked and scored, however. And as you look at a 4-2 game, those two unearned runs in the first inning are awfully important. Well, they're definitely important. Equally important is keeping it right here at this two-run game. It's easy enough to chip away two. Still got plenty of time to do that. Just got to leave those ducks on the pond. Couple of tight sliders to get ahead. That's a pitch that Zach really worked on this offseason is being able to command that thing, that harder slider as opposed to the bigger, slower looping curve ball. So you showed him a couple of those. Do you maybe elevate a fastball up well above the zone? The 0 2. Did he go? Yeah, he did. Slow, slower, slowest for Zach Thompson. Good enough to take care of Schwarber on strikes, and there's your second out. He didn't even need to change the eye level. Went right back to it. Could not check the swing. Even harder, the slider right there in the dirt. A really nice job by Herrera behind the plate to smother it. And now Trey Turner with the bases loaded. Fouled away. Funny game, isn't it? The Phillies yesterday were hitless with runners in scoring position. Today they have four hits with men in scoring position, five in total in the game, and a 4-2 lead. Turner, the eighth man to bat in the inning. Well, that is, that's baseball, right? That's why you play the game. Yeah. You just never know what's going to happen. Uh, game one of the series, Spencer Turnbull just shoved. Couldn't figure out a way to get anything going. Been able to get three against Wheeler yesterday and win that ball game. Shut out the Phillies. Strike three call. Thompson punches out Schwarber and Turner with the bases loaded. And the Cardinals survive the sixth. I think that she'll be sitting there so quietly. Stuff gets me all jacked up, Chip. Wilson Contreras leads off. He struck out and walked. And didn't get that. Strike one. That's a different color to cotton candy than I've seen here. Play all kinds. I haven't seen the orange, though. Yeah. yeah the blue, the pink. It all is the same, right? All tastes the same. Matt Strom's getting loose. This might be the final inning for Nola. Let's make him pay. Cardinals have two runs on three hits. That's off to our right still. 0 oh and 2. Contreras has reached base in 17 straight games. He extended that with a third inning walk. 0-2, you can still do some damage. That's exactly what Donovan did. His was an 0-2 breaking ball that he just got the barrel to, flew out of the park. But it's not to be there. He's dotted on the outside corner. And Aranola starting to get the feel for that breaking ball. Takes care of Wilson. And this time the cutter, Plaza Tire Service pitch track. I mean, that is perfectly placed. You can see the ball move. It moves just enough to tell you that it's not true to the catcher's glove. Gorman's over two. And as the conditions have steadied, so has the command of Nola. Haven't seen him throwing out multiple baseballs every time he gets one back here in the last couple of innings. Kids are at the ballpark today. You can hear them cheering the birds on in the middle innings. In 
at bat, one ball, two strikes. That's a pretty sweet field trip, by the way. Oh, going to a Cardinal baseball game? You serious? Well, you learn a lot of things. Actually had a great program earlier teaching about baseball. Benji Molino, Polo Asensio, the Spanish broadcasters have that whole crew uh, learned about the game of baseball, learned about life. They did a great job with the kids. Boy, one young fans found out that orange cotton candy is delightful. Ball three. This one's got more sugar. <laughs> Well, how about a base runner in Arenado hitting his first homer? That would be a nice recipe. Pitch 82 from Nola is on the way. And there you go. There's ball four. Gorman's aboard. He's being a lot more selective at the plate. So he's reached base for the first time, and Nolan's up. He's over two. Nolan has been working. He's trying to get out of the little funk. You mentioned it earlier. The hitting streak that he had was snapped yesterday. And one big swing of the back could snap things right back. Oh, he turned on that baby and launched it foul. No balls and a strike. And I would imagine in this spot, Nola's going to keep the ball away from Arenado and dare him to hit the ball the other way. Yeah, if he goes inside, he's going to go in off the plate. It's going to be more for effect or tie him up because he'll be aggressive in there also. Fought off to stay alive. No balls, two strikes. You see it happen an awful lot when big league players aren't as comfortable as they'd like. When they're able to hit the ball the other way and let it travel, you mentioned that about Nolan Gorman the other day. Let the ball travel, and all Certainly. of a sudden, the swing is loosened up and the ball jumps. Maybe that's what Arenado needs. Well, even if if just the thought is that way, yeah. right? You're just thinking about being calm instead of jumping, right? Because we know that Nolan Arenado, his spray chart, he, he pulls the ball that's on the outer half, and he does so with authority when he's on. But it's still that thought about catching it a little bit deeper in the zone instead of being caught out in front. And it's obviously easier said than done. Yeah. But you look at the way the Phillies are lining up here in a spot where you're down two runs. Stott is all the way up the middle. Harper's holding the runner at first. There's three acres to play with on the right side of the infield for yeah. Arenado. Yeah, the idea of take what they give you. Well, he's battled back to an even count. Nola's fastball now in the upper 80s. So he might be running out of steam. The Phillies saw that again with Strom getting loose in their bullpen. He's getting ready for Burleson and Crawford. If we get that far, the 2-2 pitch. Try to hit that ball to right. And spoils another one. Reel him in, Nolan. Pitch number seven is coming up. A pitch sequence for Nola. He sunk it, the cutter, and then four straight four seamers. Rolled over to the left side. Boom, cuts it off and throws over to first. Bad throw, but Harper saves an error. Runner to second, two out. So it's up to Herrera to keep the inning alive for the Cardinals. He's already homered. It was the longest homer by distance of any Cardinals hitter this year. 432, I believe, the tail of the tape. Almost to the concourse level above the Phillies' bullpen.
I'm guessing this would be Nola's last batter either way. I would agree with you. You got a couple of lefties coming up. You got the pitch count now sitting at 90. Probably be his last chance at it. Take a low. Two balls, one strike. Cardinals hitting 239 as a team with two outs. Now we're ready with the 2 1. High fly ball towards center. Rojas broke back, but it'll carry out to him. And Aaron Nola, with six innings of two run ball, enjoys a 4 2 lead here in St. Louis. Made the score what it is right now, 4 to 2. Well, got to hold him right there, Brad. This is where the Cardinals' bullpen has done an excellent job in so many of these games. They've been close for St. Louis, 9 of 12 decided by three runs or less. And by and large, the bullpen has done really good work of holding him there and giving the offense a chance to come back. Absolutely, and that is what Zach Thompson did in relief that inning. Punched out two, punched out Schwarber and Turner, left all those ducks on the pond. That was huge. It continues to give you a chance. And Thompson is a guy that we've seen in multiple roles off. Obviously, we've seen him start first couple of games this season. We saw him start last year, but he's been an effective weapon out of the bullpen as well. So he'll start the seventh inning with Bryce Harper, Real Muto, Bohm, and Marsh. The first four scheduled. Harper, 0 for the series. Little pop left side. He swings the first one. And... Nolan's got that. So Bryce Harper is 0 for 3. Here's Real Muto. He started the hit parade in the sixth inning with an opposite field single inside the bag at first. JT has scored two runs. And the Cardinals, two unearned runs in the first inning. Lance Lynn, lead off walk, got two quick outs. Real Muto, a routine, well, that's not fair. A deep fly ball to center. Victor Scott twisted and turned and dropped it. That scored Schwarber. Bohm followed with a single, and just like that, it was two zip. Cardinals have come back with solo homers from Herrera and Donovan. But the Birds only have three hits today. There's a shot towards center. And that one is off the glove of Victor. Looked like he was caught in between on that one. And Real Muto reaches with one out. Well, it's tough to make this decision on this one because if you whiff on it, all of a sudden you've got somebody standing at third. Freezes and then makes the decision to come in. Had it. Just rattles out of his glove. They give Real Muto a hit. That's a knock. Left his feet. Bones reached twice. He scored once. He's knocked in a run. He's got a 12 game hitting streak against the Cardinals, who next see the Phillies at the end of May. May 31st, June 1st, and 2nd at Citizens Bank Park. That place will be rocking when the cards come to town. Those have turned their home park into one of the best home field advantages in the sport. A pretty good atmosphere over there. It is a fun place to be. 
Official crowd count today 33,104. And a peg to first. You do have to keep an eye on Rio Muto. Yes, he's a catcher, but he's also a great athlete. He was recruited as a high school football quarterback. I was thinking about going to Oklahoma. But then the Marlins drafted him, and the rest is history. Think about the team they had in Miami. Stanton, Yelich, Jose Fernandez, JT Rio Muto, Zuna. Zuna's from the Braves, but he was, yes, on Marlins for a while. I thought he said Marlins. Yeah. No. My bad. No, that was my bad. But they had a great team. As we saw, at least with Miami, all those guys they moved on didn't get a whole lot back, or at least guys that thought were going to be really, wow. really terrific players. It hasn't worked out that way for them. When you're going to dismantle something and you're going to go out there and make those deals, you better hope to get something huge in return. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, that biggest loss for that franchise was Jose Fernandez and his infectious personality and otherworldly talent on the mound. Terrible. He was a guy that that community really, really was drawn to. I just yeah, strike three over the outside corner, two outs. It paints that one right there to get another punch out for Thompson. Make that three for him. Your Plaza Tire Service pitch track right on the corner. But just from a pitching standpoint, Fernandez was he, he was must see TV. Like buy a ticket, whatever it costs, want to see the show. Yeah, I mean, he pitched. They get thirty thousand people at the ballpark. Yep. Here's Marsh. He's one for three. He had the first of the RBIs and the sixth for the Phillies. Guessing Matt Strom will be next for Philly. Three lefties due among the next four on the Cardinals card. 4-2 game. That's upstairs. One ball, one strike. That's out of play off to the left. Let's see who comes up with that souvenir. Where's that fan from, Brad? Chip, this is this is your. I didn't do that sort of prep work. No. What do you think? To pair. To pair. Okay. Is it the poncho? Pretty good. Clue. Hat and the, the golf hat. Looks good on him. Roller foul at first. Get a free bowl of soup. <laughs> Four six and zero oh for the Phillies. Two three and two for the Cardinals. Marsh, a really nice piece of the puzzle for the Phillies. Remember. A couple of years ago, they had Odubel Herrera playing center field for them, and he was really in and out both offensively and defensively. This guy really solidified things for them. And now with Rojas manning center, you have the luxury of two center fielders in your defensive lineup every day. That was close. Two and two. A pretty nice breaking ball right there by Thompson. Caught well by Herrera behind the plate. The difference again, he was looking for that thing down the way and reaches across. Makes it a little bit tougher to get that one, but I, I agree with you with Mars. Just good player, grinds out at bats. But he's struck out by Thompson, who has punched out four men in two innings of relief.
in game three. Both Nola and Lance Lynn pitched terrifically today. Strong pitching performances. We've seen that throughout this series. The starters have looked good. Cardinals looking for some more of those clutch hits. Unfortunately, a pair scored in the sixth inning. And now finally, Nola out of this ball game. Matt Strom is in. He's your Sheppy call to the bullpen. Sixth game of the season. Four scoreless appearances for him in a row. Blew a save on opening day. But he has looked solid. Remember him a long time. Started his career in Kansas City. Was with the Padres for a number of years before spending 2022 in Boston. And he and Brandon Marsh go to the same barber. That's a little known fact for the Phillies not, outfielder. Yeah, not country. often. Yeah, not right. often. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> As we start our Honda home run inning with the Cardinals down two. If the birds hit one out here, your gateway Honda dealers donate $1,000 to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. St. Louis has hit two homers today. One by Herrera, one by Donovan. And it's lefty-lefty for Alec Burleson, who's one for two today. First pitch swing on the ground to second. Alec flips the bat away in frustration. One man down. And Burleson playing for Paul Goldschmidt, who's really struggling at the plate. He'd be the first to tell you that. And ideally, Ali told us he'd prefer not to use goalie at all today, right? Yeah, just give him the day, too. I mean, even without the struggles offensively, you, you've got to get players off their feet at times. You know, Mason Wynn coming in, hitting for Crawford. We finished 0 for 2 at shortstop today. Mason had a big moment in the first game of this series. Two outs, two strikes, a base hit to left to get game one of this series tied and force extra innings man was he fired up about oh, it as he made his way to first that was so fun to see talk about just building up some confidence so this young man has got plenty of it and you have to man. you have to at this level you have to believe in yourself you have to believe in the abilities he just carries himself like he's been here for a while and i mean that with a great deal of respect it's not a, a cockiness necessarily just he knows he belongs here and he's showing it offensively this season 333 average. He's made all the plays at shortstop. And as you mentioned, St. Louis, what, 14 double plays turned this year. He's had, had a hand in almost all of them. And pretty much almost every one of those bad boys. And this is a tough assignment, too, for a young man yeah. coming off the bench late in a ball game. Finds himself in a hole. Can he shorten up, put a little pressure on that defense? Breaking ball throws him, and Strom has out number two via strikeout. And Jordan Walker is coming up. We'll celebrate him with a special day on Friday, April 19th, when the Brewers are here. 25,000 fans. 16 and up get a Jordan Walker bobblehead presented by Central Bank. Go to cardinals.com slash promotions for all the details. Walker hit a bullet to center last time up. And that went off the end of the bat. Chip, how many bobbleheads have you had in your career? Oh, me? Yeah, of you. Of zero. We need zero. That head of hair has not been on a bobblehead yet? Um, I, I think they're more worried about having enough hair for the eyebrow. All right, how many chia pets have you had, then? Oh, at least five or six. Ground ball foul. <laughs> the Einstein chia pet was the best. Oh, that's an idea yeah. right there. Yeah, no, Write no that bobblehead. down for next year. No bobblehead, but Chip Carey, Chia Pen. Oh, yeah, but it has to grow just out of the eyebrows. It can be both, okay? Oh. okay. Or just the eyebrows, whatever you want. Why don't, we just stick, why don't we just stick with the Cardinal Bird hat? Are Chia Pets still a thing? Ricky Darty, our stat man, says yes. Right. Driven the other way foul. I'll bet, I'll bet Ricky has an unbelievable Chia, head, chia Pet collection you think so yeah ricky oh no question it's kind of everybody's got their thing I yeah can, i mean i can see ricky being a chia pet kind of guy no balls two strikes now one and two for walker Victor Scott would be next with a tough lefty on the mound. The one-two pitch.
How long would it take you to grow your hair as long as strong? I have no idea. I know that uh, if I try to do it, though, Chip, I'm telling you, it's going to look like Joe Dirt. I think it's just <laughs> going to come in. One, two. What do you think would grow faster, your hair or the Chia Pet? Chia Pet. Chia Pet? Yeah, pretty good chance. I think so. You water that, it'll grow, you know? You know what Chia Pets are going for now? What's that? Ricky's online. He's going to order one. He's going to order the Bob Ross Chia Pet. That's a good one. For 20 bucks. Stop it. Shot to short. And Trey Turner with a strike to first. That will retire the side. <laughs> Thankfully, go to the eighth inning. It's 4 2 Phillies. Oh, you can see that. This is going to be a thing. Like $20 for a Bob Ross one. Stop with that. We are full of. Yes, ideas too. Of course. As we go to the eighth inning. Mason Wynn stays in the game. He's at shortstop. I like that kid's raincoat too. Tyrannosaurus Rex, I'm guessing. As Castellanos leads off. I think it's Stegosaurus. There's a strike. Zach's done good work, giving the Cardinals some length out of the bullpen. Four strikeouts in two innings. He's allowed two singles. So this is exactly what they needed out of him. First of all, got you out of a jam and now giving you some length. Were you surprised at the um, way Ali used his bullpen last night? Because we were told that the first option was going to be Zach Thompson out of the bullpen behind Sonny Gray. I, I wasn't due to the fact that where the Cardinals were in the game. So Sonny was able to get them through five innings. Remember, in that fifth inning, they did have Zach throwing out in the bullpen. But they had the lead. Another breaking ball. Make that strikeout number five here for Thompson. Buries this thing. Uh, but having the lead and then having your bullpen fresh and set up the way that they would like it to stack it for a victory. And that goes back to trusting all the guys that you have in your pen. I love the way that Ollie used the pen yesterday and love the way that everybody stepped up because there were big outs from everybody. Even though Libby didn't have the best control early on, got the big double play off the bat of Harper. Kittredge came in, punched out Real Muto, got out of that one. JoJo was awesome. Mm -hmm. Four punch outs in his inning in two thirds. And then Ryan Helsley shut the door. Thompson today, five strikeouts out of the bullpen. That's a career equaling performance. His most strikeouts as a starting pitcher was eight. And he's got Bryson Stott set up. And bounced foul and out of play. Again, it's it's really been remarkable how to this point in the season, because the starting pitching for the Cardinals has been so reliable, that Ali Marmo and his staff have been able to stack the bullpen, keep guys fresh, but yet have the right guy ready for the lane needed late in the game. Well, then having that balance, see, two of the Cardinals starters, Miles Michaelis and Kyle Gibson, Tommy Edmond. We got a chance to talk to Tommy and Dylan Carlson a little bit yesterday. They were so happy that the team was back. It's lonely when you're on the IL when the team's on the road. Thompson, he applies the tag, but Stott with a head first dive with a left hand got to the pillow. Let's see if the Cardinals take a look at this. Yeah, I really thought that initially Thompson got that glove in, but they say the hand of Stott got in there first. Looks safe from that angle. St. Louis is challenging the safe call at first base. Nothing to lose. You might as well see if you get lucky with the call. But another infield hit for the Phillies. They've had a ton of them in this series. A couple of infield hits yesterday actually almost derailed things for that Cardinals bullpen. It was Kittredge that was on the mound. Had a little dribbler that went in between him and Goldie. Then Castellanos, I believe it was, just got in his kitchen and dumped one somehow in the infield a spinner but able to get out of it. That's one of the few times I think Brad we'd agree that you do consider diving at first base. 
Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's not faster to right. do that. Right. But if you're evading that tag, of course, you're going to hit the dirt. So we think that uh, Stott beat the ramp at first for his first hit of the game as replay center in New York. It's an impressive setup. I think that's the only chance Zach had with a fast runner. Even if he tries to go to the bag standing up, Stott's probably yeah. going to beat it. And yeah, the only way there is, is you're diving at him if you're the pitcher. Yeah. So Rojas is up. Another hit for him. He's 12 for his last 20 against the Cardinals. Popped up. Herrera sheds the mask and slows at the track and makes the grab. Seen a couple that he tracks down. Goes shin guard, knee first into that brick wall back there. Luckily, he's got some protection. So we'll take another look at Schwiber here in the eighth inning. He's 0 for 3. Sharply hit and a rocket in the right. That got to Walker in a big time hurry. Can't wait to see the exit velo. On this missile off Schwarber's back. Well, he's been so aggressive early in counts. First pitch swing, and this is the first time in this series he's actually come up with a knock. And this one, you mentioned it getting there in a hurry. 115.1 miles an hour off the bat. So, I mean, that thing's going to catch you if you get it. So, two on, two out for Trey Turner. Phillies now with eight hits in the game. Palante and Nola, the pitchers of record so far this afternoon. Cardinals have six outs left. They'll have the top of the order coming up after Victor Scott starts things in this eighth inning. Ground ball foul. One ball, one strike. Ryan Fernandez is starting to play catch. He's getting loose as Thompson now 41 pitches. Zach, a college kid, went to Kentucky. A four inning save at his major league debut in June of 2022. Like early in his career, too, showing off that versatility. That'll keep you in the big leagues, being able to be a guy that can eat up some innings out of the pen, can start some games for you. Runners go and a swing and a miss. And Trey Turner is not feeling it at the plate. He strikes out for the third time. And Zach Thompson, three scoreless innings of relief. And he's held the Phillies right there. Now we'll see if we can make some hay against Gregory Soto. Another Philly answering the Chevy call to that. About time to give Gregory Soto an ERA. Fantastic start to the season. We saw Soto in game one through 20 pitches. 11 strikes with a couple of strikeouts. Victor Scott, Brendan Donovan, Wilson Contreras, the first three coming up. Look, we're just a bloop and a blast away from tying this game. And with a lefty-lefty matchup for Victor, I'll, I'll say it again, I'd like, like to see him try to pull a bunt with him down the first baseline and see if he can... A, make contact, and B, win the race. Yeah, a couple of days ago, we talked to Ollie Marmel about that, eh? just asking how comfortable he is doing that, dropping down those bunts. He said he is very comfortable. It's, it's a skill set that he has. That sure does put a lot of pressure. Anything, really, that he hits in the infield is going to put a lot of pressure on. Uh, you hit on 
on the perfect point though you are you're a, you're a bloop a blast away from tying this ball game up a quick little rally from getting things going it doesn't feel like it. you only scattered three hits in this ball game that's how quickly it can escalate though Soto's in there pumping the gas nice easy 97 and now with two strikes you don't expect to bunt Victor roll for two today. He's popped out and grounded out. Run, baby. Little dribbler toward third. Scott's going to have an infield hit. And did Victor turn the wrong way? He did. Oh. He got past the first base bag and turned toward the infield, not foul ground. The Phillies sniff that out and get a huge break as Victor's going to be tagged out. Uh, this is stuff you, you did what we were talking about, right? Put the ball on the ground. That just simply can't happen. Get a good look at it here. Plus hard. No, he's got the hit, but then turns into fair territory. Brendan Donovan almost took one in the helmet. You can't miss there. Oh, that is, it's 98 miles an hour at the head. So for scoring purposes, Victor Scott is credited with an infield hit that snaps an 0 for 24. He's out five to three after turning back into fair territory after an infield single. And now Donovan somehow has to muster the courage to stand in with Soto. He's had three and oh. Well, that very next pitch, you see Donovan, he didn't even flinch. Did not move. That shoulder, that front hip, nothing flew out. He's about as tough as they come. On the ground right side, and Stock takes care of that for out number two. So two up, two down for St. Louis in the eighth inning. Here's a quick word from BJC Healthcare. Contreras is 0 for 2. He's turning it loose with that bottom hand. That's good to see. Perhaps he'll be in the lineup behind the plate when we join you again from Phoenix. Ball and two strikes. And Rio Muto's glove is popping with every pitch. It's just letting it fly. And you're right, everything is so quiet with Soto until that arm whips through. Out of play. We'll try again. Two balls, two strikes. Such an unfortunate start to this inning right here. You get the hit, you get on. Just a bad base running. Puts you in a hole. All part of the learning curve at this level. Absolutely is. Up the middle. There's a base hit. Contreras 
at the 3 o'clock hour. Gives the Cardinals some hope. Now you've got Gorman, lefty versus lefty, with a chance to tie the game in the eighth. Power on power, 98 mile an hour fastball from Soto. Contreras gets the barrel to it, shoots it right back up the box. So Caleb Gotham, the Phillies pitching coach, out for a visit. And Gorman, three homers. He's shown oppo power already on the young season. Did that a lot last year, just in case the Phillies bullpen busy. Sir Anthony Dominguez is playing catch. That might be if you get to Arenado, and the Cardinals hope that's the case. Can the Cardinals come up with some late inning magic today? One on, two outs. Pulled, foul at first. That almost got stubby. Clap on the way by. Nice Harper playing right in front of the first base back. Not really holding Contreras. More about guarding the line here for Bryce. And just like that, it's nothing in two. Well, dots 97 in, then spots 98 away. Now it's protect mode, and maybe it's that sweeping slider, that left side pretty wide open for Gorman. It's amazing. If that was a slide step, he threw that ball 98 miles an hour. Still got plenty of power. Man. He's trying to get chases, but Nolan Gorman not biting yet. Here comes the 2-2 two -two pitch. So an advantage for Contreras now. He'll get a head start. If Gorman splits a gap, he might be able to score. Much got to make contact with a man throwing 98 miles an hour. There he goes. The pitch is high. And now Arenado a chance to put the Cardinals in front. Bob Thompson's on his way out. No way is he going to let Soto face Arenado. He's going to bring on Sir Anthony Dominguez with two on, two out in a two-run eighth inning game. So Gorman, two walks. There's your score. There are your base runners. It's iron auto time when we come back. Phillies bullpen surrendered four homers this year in uh, 40 innings of work. Two on, two out. And Nolan takes strike one. Cardinals are two for 20 with runners in scoring position in this series. See if Arenado can improve that. Dominguez, another guy that wants you to chase. They're going to have two hits and a walk in this inning. One ball, two strikes. Line into center field, base hit. We got a one run game. Throw back to second and safely there is Gorman. So Nolan Arenado picks up his fifth RBI, a two strike knock. It's a 4-3 game and the tying run in scoring position. 
protected, was able to cover this 96 mile an hour fastball and has just enough to drop this thing into center field right off the end of the bat. Get this thing just a little bit tighter. Again, Redbirds aren't going away. Herrera takes one around the bill of the cap. 432 foot homer for Herrera earlier in the game. We'd settle for a long single here. Nobody up in the Phillies pen. This is Dominguez's game in the eighth. Oh, he swung at ball two and ripped that into the Phillies dugout. He is thinking damage here in the eighth inning. Well, he might as well early on, right? Find something you can drive. He's got plenty of power. Now it is protect time, right? Cover anything that you can. If he goes back out there with that slider, you have to be able to lay off it or you have to be able to shoot it the other direction. Well, Arenado had a two strike hit. Let's see what Herrera can do. Fall off the slider. That's where I'd pitch him. I'd make him hit the ball the other way if he can. Well, he's shown off plenty of pull side power. That is. To me, a really good piece of hitting. Foul that thing off. Get yourself another chance. Maybe he goes right back to the well. Slider backs up a little bit, and he can barrel something. Nice Harper well off the line at first with Arenado there. Gorman, the lead runner at second. Rojas pretty shallow now in center. Castiano San Marsh in the Philly corners. The 2 2 pitch. Good rip. Once that one back, 97 center cut. Again, the Cardinals, Brad, are doing what they've done all year, giving us a finish late. But it is really, it's a change from a year ago. I mean, you looked at late in the game, if you were down, you didn't have that feeling that you were going to come back. Things have changed. Fouled off another tough one. That's 98 out there on the corner. Sped him up twice. Pitch number eight in a critical at bat. Reel him in, Yvonne. See if he can turn these raindrops into Phillies tears in a 4-3 game. Almost half of the Cardinals runs have come in the seventh inning or later this year. They've got one, the pitch. Outside, full count. So now a real advantage. You're going to have two runners in motion. A double could put you in front. And that man is waiting next. Three balls, two strikes. Little tapper back to the mound. He swung at ball four, and that will retire the side. The Cardinals pick up one, two hits, make it three hits and a walk, and we go to the ninth. Very Sweet, popular. aren't they? Very, very. You popular. see them all over town. Bryce Harper versus Thompson in the ninth inning. Got to hold him right here. Got two frustrated Phillies batting back to back on their lineup card. Trey Turner and Bryce Harper. That has been 0 for 10 to this point in the series for Harper. Would love to see 11. Andrew Kittredge is playing catch in the bullpen. Thinking along with Ali, maybe it's Thompson for Harper. Then you've got Real Muto and Boehm, right handed batters, bring Kittredge in. Keep it 4 3. I think Bryce was looking for something else there. <laughs> that slow bender. That one whacked towards second. And Harper will go 0 for St. Louis in this series. Mm -hmm. 
So there's out number one, and yes, it is going to be Kittredge for the right-hand batters. And Zach Thompson, outstanding work, Brad, in relief. Scattered four hits, struck out six men, and has given St. Louis a chance, as has been so often the case this year, a chance to come back. Yeah, pitching overall, been good in this one. Lance Lynn was solid, but if the Cardinals come back and win, that might be the guy that you're looking at in Thompson. season one of those new faces is the veteran Andrew Kittredge who's already paying big dividends in relief he is and just a calm presence out on the mound late in games we saw him in the ball game last night two-thirds of an inning two strikeouts came in and got that big punch out of JT real Muto came in in relief of Matthew Libertor that pitch is just it seems so easy coming out of his hand. And as a hitter, you got to make a decision because he's going one of two directions. He's got the slider that darts that way, and he's got a sinker that will bust in on your hands. Oh, that got a big piece of Herrera. Real Muto knows all about that. I think that got... Yvonne above the shin guards. Yeah, he tried to wave off Chris Conroy there for a second. He said, you can go, but he might need a second. That's as flush as you're going to get caught right on the inside of the thigh. So Kittredge way ahead of Leon Muto, who's reached base three times and has scored two. Two unearned runs in the first inning, huge in this game. Popped up. Burleson in foul ground will have plenty of room to handle that. Two outs. When we get to the ninth inning, you'll have Burleson, Mason win. And Jordan Walker, the first three scheduled to get your rally caps on. Brad's rally bird is close by, so we're in good shape. As Alec Bohm bats, he's reached twice, scored once. These two faced each other last night. It was Andrew Kittredge that won the battle, ended up punching out Bohm, looking on a slider. Line on Zach Thompson, three and a third innings, no runs, four hits, six strikeouts, and most importantly, no walks. Impeccable command today. He's really good. Herrera's shaking his head. He just got hit by that one in the other thigh. That's a tough business back there. Well, at least he won't limp. <laughs> He's all even now. <laughs> You, you want to catch, you say. It'll be fun, they said. We always try to find the sunny side here on Cardinals baseball. Three balls and a strike. Marsh would be next. So a full count. Oh, it's fun watching veteran relievers have their plus stuff. So calm, so collected. Nothing phases Andrew Kittredge. He's an all-star, you know. He's been around a while. Back after Tommy John surgery and healthy for the cards. The payoff. I like, too, that he provides a little bit different look out of the pen. That's something that you and I have talked about. We talked about a lot last year. There's a different setup, hides the ball well, really fast arm. And a swing and a miss. 
Kittredge retires Real Muto and Bohm, and the Cardinals are a blast away from tying game three. It's a 4-3 score. He'll answer the Chevy call to the bullpen. The Cardinals tagged him in his first appearance in this series. He gave up a couple of runs, and if he could do a repeat of that, we'll win this series. I would love to see that. Love seeing the fight so far out of the Cardinals in this ball game. Yeah, One question the Phillies have, I guess what their fans have, is that, as you mentioned, Craig Kimbrell left and went to Baltimore. The Phillies didn't go out and get Josh Hader. They didn't get a big-time closer for this team that's, frankly, built to get to and win the World Series. Yeah, and kind of doing the committee thing. They've got a few arms that they believe in. Ho obviously, Hoffman, part of that. Jose Alvarado, Sir Anthony Dominguez. I mean, they've got some guys that they believe in. But you know this, having a distinguished role is important at some point, and maybe that will solidify for Rob Thompson's group. Well, Hoffman on red alert right away with Alec Burleson up there. He's hit the ball hard three times. It is one for three today. Mason Wynn next. A bloop and a blast wins the game. We'll take a base runner any way we can get it. The Phillies have walked four Cardinals today, but they've only allowed six hits. Swing and a shot over the glove of Stott and into right field. Oh, what's the exit velo on that baby? Schwarber had won 115 off the bat. That was awfully close, I would think. Nope, not quite as hot. 105.3, that one, I mean, that went through Stott over at second base. Another baseball scorched by Alec Burleson. He'll be lifted for the pinch runner, Michael Ciani. Nice day for Burley. So two hits for him. Here's Wynn. Mason checked in for Crawford in the seventh inning and struck out. No sign of a bunt. I would think, too, Brad, it'd be awfully hard to think about a stolen base with this part of the lineup card up. The bad weather, obviously, the muddy track, but also you got JT Real Muto behind the plate. You better you better have something on Hoffman if you're going to do that. You better have a, a tell that gives you a jump. Popped up. Shallow right, and Castellanos has plenty of room. And there's the first out. So Jordan Walker is next. Paul Goldschmidt has grabbed a bat. He's in the on-deck circle. Let's see if Walker can park one and walk us off. As we talked to Ollie earlier, he said he wanted to give Goldie that full day off. But you get a situation like this, and you've got the MVP from a couple of years ago is lurking on the bench. And as he told us, he said, I know at some point he's going to be standing there holding his helmet next to me. Going to make the call. Sharply hit to short. Second base one, first base two, and the Phillies survive and win the series in St. Louis. 4-3 is the final score today, and the Cardinals wrap up a 3-3 three three home well, stand. disappointing in the finale because I really believe it's the first time in the season that the Cardinals beat themselves. Had some unforced errors in this ballgame. Well pitched by the Birds, just not quite enough to come back and get the series victory. Aaron Nola the winner, Andre Palante the loser. Hoffman picks up the save, and we'll wrap it all up for you on Cardinals Live postgame from our Valley Sports Midwest studios after the break.